All right, so in this video, I'm going to cover three different sections, 3.1, 3.3, and 3.4, kind of all together. Um, and really what all these sections are about is finding that fundamental set of solutions um, that we can then put together like we did in the last section. Um, so I'm going to start off with just looking at second order. So here's that y double prime. Homogeneous, there's that set equal to zero. Linear, all of these y's and their derivatives are to a first power. Constant coefficient, a, b, and c are all numbers and differential equations. So we're going to look at them in this form. Now, if you think about what function, y, could you add its derivative and its second derivative together and possibly get zero with constants out in front? And if you think about this, really the only one is an exponential function where the second derivative, the first derivative, and y will all have their same sort of base function and then the constants out in front will cancel. So we're basically going to say let's just guess a solution and let's just say that that solution is some y equal to, we know it's an exponential function, but we don't know exactly what it's, um, what the number out in front of t is going to be in that exponential function. So I'm just going to call it r. Right now I want to plug this into this differential equation. So um, we'd need its first derivative, which would put an r out in front of e to the rt, and we would need a second derivative, which would put another r, so we'd get r squared e to the rt. So I'm going to plug these things into the differential equation. So I've got a times r squared e to the rt plus b, and then that first derivative e or r e to the rt, and then c times the function itself e to the rt. I'm going to set this equal to zero. Now I could factor out the e to the rts out of this whole thing. And then, but e to the rt is never going to equal zero. And so I can, you could think of it as dividing it out. You could think of it as sort of ignoring it because that can never be zero. An exponential never is zero. And so, um, or at least this exponential because it's not shifted. Um, and so what that leaves us with is a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. And this gives us a way now to solve to solve for r. Um, you know, some of these will be factorable. Some of them will need to use the fact that r is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. If you don't have that formula memorized, you should. You're going to use it a lot right now. Um, and that is, uh, that's because we're going to solve for these roots, and once we have all these roots, that tells us what our solution looks like. It looks like the exponential to that root. All right, um, so moral of the story on all of this is that our solutions are exponentials to roots, but we can, with this, kind of have three different types of roots. Um, I'm going to do a new pair for this. So we were looking at a times y double prime plus b times y prime plus c times y equals zero. And what we got when we put in that solution is we got a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero. And just look at the correspondence here between this. Um, this guy right here is called the characteristic equation. Character, am I spelling this right? Characteristic equation. And it's characteristic because it tells us about the R's. All right, so really when we solve these, the first thing you're gonna do is replace Y double prime with R squared. Replace Y prime with R, get rid of Y, then, second thing, solve for those r's. And in this specific case right now, because it's second order, there's going to be two of them. 
there's going to be two of them and that is because of the y double prime. So if we had a y triple prime, then we would have three of them. Um, but that's getting into another section and I'll talk about that in just a sec. All right, so now once you have your r's, there's basically three different things that can happen. So the first thing that could happen is that you could get two real r values. So let's call them r1 and r2. So real as in they're two different numbers. They are 2 and 3, or they are square root of 2 and pi. Those are two different real numbers. So if you get those, then what the solution looks like is a constant times e to the r1 of t, and that is because e to the r1 of t, we had said that that was a solution, so that's one of the solutions in the fundamental set. And then remember, we put constants out in front. Oh, and we need two constants, so let's make that a C1. Plus a C2 e to the r2 of t for the other uh, real valued root from the characteristic equation. All right, so we could have two real ones. We could have a repeated, so one real number, but it's repeated meaning it happens twice. So say you factor and you get like x minus 1 squared. That's only x equals 1 is the solution to that. Um, and I just use x's instead of r's, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, you can have one real repeated root, and let's just call that one r. So we start doing this whole thing with the fundamental set of solutions, and we get e to the rt. But because this is second order, we need a second, but we don't have a different function. We don't have a linearly independent function. Um, and so what we need to do is make a linearly independent function, and we can do that by putting a t out in front of the differential equation. All right, so if you have a real repeated root, that's what your solution would look like. And then third, and most complex, no pun intended, is that you get complex roots in your, um, I just cracked myself up, uh, in your roots. So if your root looks like, oh gosh, let me not use A and B because those are up above. Let's use, how about alpha plus beta times I. All right, so if you get complex roots, then uh, what your solution looks like, let me just write it out and then I'll kind of give a little bit of like why it is. So what your solution is going to look like is C1 e to the alpha t cosine of beta times t plus C2 e to the alpha times t sine of beta times t. All right, so these solutions really are e to the alpha plus or minus beta i e to the root times t. I mean, they really are. But if I asked you, what does this function do? That's a really hard question to answer. Um, and so, because really, I don't know what it does. It's an exponential function, but it has an imaginary number in it. That's not very familiar. Uh, but we can do some work to this. So we could say that this is e to the alpha t times e to the plus or minus beta i times t. So I just use exponential properties right there. I could say that this is e to the alpha t times cosine of beta t plus or minus i times sine of beta t. And what I've done right there is I've used Euler's formula, and Euler's formula says that e to the i times x is equal to cosine of x plus i times sine of x. If anybody's interested into where this formula comes from, um, I'll show you later. It has to do with Taylor series, um, which came from Calc 2. So if you're interested in where that came from, I'll, I'll definitely um, let you know. Um, but for the shortness of this video, I'm not going to put it in here. All right, 
So we have e to the alpha t cosine plus i sine of beta t. And now at least if I ask you what this function does, you can say, well, it oscillates. And that's true. And it just so happens that if you take the two different pieces of it, this piece right there, then that would be one of the equations in the fundamental set. And you know what? I'm going to back up just a second and write this in one other way so I can put both of them in here. I'm going to distribute that E. Plus or minus I E to the alpha T sine of beta T. So I just distributed that E to both of them. So now you can see that you've got two different functions and you could test these. You could plug these two without the I. Notice that. I'm going to cross that out. That I is not in the equation to the fundamental set. We're looking for real solutions, not complex ones. All right. Uh, let me do a couple of examples. So in the first one, let's solve y double prime plus 3y prime plus 2y equal to 0, where y of 0 is equal to 1, and y prime of 0 is equal to negative 4. All right, so the first thing we do is find the characteristic equation, and that is replacing our, our y double prime with r squared, replacing y prime with r, and getting rid of y, setting that equal to 0. Now I need to solve the r's. Uh, looks like this is factorable into r plus 2 and r plus 1. Let me double check it. 2 times 1 is 2, and then we've got 2 plus 1, and that's 3. Yep. So that means that my roots are negative 2 and negative 1, and so that means that my solution is going to look like a combination with c1's e2 one of the roots times t plus c2 e to the other root negative times t. And then I've got these initial conditions. So let me plug those in. y of 0 is equal to c1 plus c2 uh, because um, the when you plug in 0, e to the 0 is 1. So that's equal to 1, and then I need to find y prime and plug in 0. I'm going to do this all at once. Okay, ready for this? So y prime. The derivative of this guy is going to put a negative 2 out in front of c1, and then e to the 0 is 1. The derivative of c2 e to the negative t is going to put a negative out in front of c2, and then it's equal to negative 4. Um, I am going to add these two together because that will eliminate the C2s because I've got C2 minus C2. So C1 minus 2C1 is minus a C1, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so C1 looks like it's 3. And then if I plug C1 into this top equation right here, subtract over that 3, it looks like C2 is going to be negative 2. All right, and then we're going to just plug those back into the differential equation and rewrite. y is equal to, let's see, c1 was 3, e to the negative 2t, and c2 is negative 2, e to the negative t. All right, pretty simple, yeah? One more. So I definitely want to do an example with the complex roots, so you can see how that works. So let's do y double prime. I want a minus in there, minus 6y prime plus 25y is equal to 0. Characteristic equation, r squared minus 6r plus 25 is equal to 0. This is not factorable, so we have to use the quadratic formula, which is negative b so that's negative 6, so negative negative 6 is positive, plus or minus the square root of 6 squared, so that's 36, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 25, all over 2 times 1. So this is 3, because 6 divided by 2, plus or minus 
Now in this square root, it's still going to be divided by 2, I am going to factor out a 4 because the square root of 4 is 2 and then I will cancel with the 2 in the bottom. So 4 times, let's see, 9 is 36. And factor out the 4 on that next one, 25. So that 4 will cancel with that 2, and that's because square root of 4 um, is 2. And then I've got 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus 25 is negative 16. So I've got 3 plus or minus 4 i. Um, I didn't say it earlier in this video and I probably should have. Don't forget that i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Alright, that's a little side note up there. Okay, so now um, now we just put this together. So we our solution is going to look like c1 e to the real number the one without i over here, times t, cosine of the imaginary number without the imaginary part, this is real solutions, not imaginary, plus c2, same thing we just did except for sine instead of cosine. And this one doesn't have an in initial conditions, otherwise we could solve for C1 and C2, just like we did on the last problem, but um, I'm trying to keep these videos short, so since I showed it in the other one, I won't show it on this one. All right, I think that's it for now. I'm just kidding, that's not it. There's one more small thing. Section 4.2 has higher order differential equations. So that means that they're going to have like triple derivatives in them. Um, and there are fourth derivatives or seventh derivatives. They work exactly the same way as these others do. You're going to get reals. You're going to get repeated. You're going to get complex roots. Um, and then you just add on more solutions depending on the order of the differential equation. So if this one is third order. You'd have one, two, three different solutions in there. Um, and they can be combinations of complex and real. Um, but this section, once you get down the other ones, is very intuitive. So we're going to do some practice on it in class. Um, but it was just worth a mention. And now I am officially done.